For the cardiovascular assessment, you will need your stethoscope and a pen light for this part. You'll also want to apply gloves when you're doing this assessment because we'll be feeling the bottom of the feet and the extremities for wounds. So you're first going to ask some health history questions. And I'm going to include the respiratory questions with this heart assessment. Do you have any history of asthma or bronchitis, COPD, any shortness of breath, any problems with coughing, any coughing up blood? Do you have any history of chest pain? Do you have any swelling in your legs, hands, face? or feet? Do you have any pain in the back of your calves? Do you have any lung issues, ever had lung surgeries or heart surgeries or any vascular surgeries? Do you have a history of high blood pressure or diabetes or kidney problems? Any history of high cholesterol or high lipids? And do you exercise on a regular basis? Do you smoke cigarettes? Do you drink alcohol? Do you use any drugs? And how often and how much? Now I'm going to begin with the inspection part of the exam. I'm going to look at skin color. The skin color is normal for ethnicity. I don't see any signs of cyanosis and no obvious signs of respiratory distress. Even easy and unlabored breathing is noted. And I'm going to check also the lower extremities for a skin color. I'm going to pull the sheets up from the bottom and observe the skin on the legs. So there's even color distribution from one side to the other. They're symmetrical. There's no evidence of edema or swelling. I don't see any obvious wounds at this time. And there's even hair distribution on the legs and the arms. I'm also going to look at the abdomen for my vascular assessment as well. And on the abdomen, I don't see any visible pulsations noted and no abnormal vascular is, is noted. So no enlarged veins on the abdomen. Okay, I don't see any obvious pulsations either. All right, so now I'm going to move on to, oh, with the legs, I also am noting that there's no deformities or obvious surgeries um, that have been performed on the lower extremities, so no amputations. I'm going to put the head of the bed at 30 to 45 degrees, okay? And I'm gonna check for jugular vein distension, so JVD. I'm gonna have my patient turn their head slightly to the side and I'm going to shine the light upward to look for any distension in the neck vein. And then the other way as well in checking for jugular vein distension. So no distension is noted. I'm gonna put my pin light down. All right, and now I'm going to do the palpation part of the exam for cardiac. There's not a lot of specific palpation, but we are gonna palpate pulses as well. So I'm going to expose my patient's chest to look for any obvious pulsations on the inspection part, and I'm feeling the pericordium, the chest wall, for any thrills or abnormal vibrations. Okay, so no thrills are noted. Now I'm gonna perform the pulse assessment we're gonna do carotid artery once, one side at a time. So check in the carotid artery. Okay, and we're gonna move on to brachial. I'm also checking with the dorsal side, skin temperature is warm and dry. Radial pulses, you're gonna check them at the same time. Okay, capillary refill while you're here. Okay, it's less than three seconds. No signs of clubbing noted. I'm gonna move down to the feet. 
to uh, femoral, femoral pulses, you're going to verbalize, then popliteal behind the knee. A slight bend in the knee will help you find that popliteal pulse a little easier. Okay. Posterior tibial pulse is on the inner aspect of the foot here, inner aspect of the ankle. So I'm feeling those. And then the dorsal pedis or pedal pulse, dorsalis pedis on the top of the foot. Okay. To find the dorsalis pedis pulse, look between the first and second toe and then follow that line up on the foot and it should be somewhere along that line. I'm also going to do capillary refill on my feet, on my toes as well. So less than three seconds and I'm going to look for any obvious wounds, check in the bottom of the feet and between the toes. While I'm down here, I'm going to also feel for any redness, edema, or wounds, and I'm going to check um, edema first. So pre-tibial edema is gonna be on the tibial aspect of the leg, and I'm going to just kind of press all the way down, and also on top of the feet, checking for edema. So no edema is noted. I'm gonna feel the back of the calves for any warmth, any tenderness here. No warmth and tenderness, no wounds, no pain are noted. Okay, now we're going to move on to the auscultation part of the exam. So the first thing you're going to auscultate is for carotid artery bruis. So you're going to put your stethoscope on and turn it to the bell. Okay. So I'm gonna have the patient turn their head slightly. I'm gonna put this over the carotid artery and tell my patient to take a breath. Hold a breath for about three seconds, okay? And I'm gonna have them look the other way. Hold your breath, okay? No bruises are noted over the carotid artery. That would indicate a stenosis of the artery if you heard a bruise. Now we're gonna move on to listening to the heart sounds. I'm gonna start with the diaphragm, okay? And I'm going to listen first at the aortic valve with the right second intercostal space on the sternal border. So aortic, pulmonic on the second intercostal space on the left sternal border. Herbs point a third intercostal space on the left sternal border. Tricuspid, left sternal border, the fourth intercostal space. And the mitral valve is the fifth intercostal space on the left midclavicular line. Now, please note that the mitral valve area is right below the nipple line. So you may need to have your patient move their breast up out of the way or you, you would use your dorsal hand to lift the breast out of the way in order to get into the right area. So after I've listened with my diaphragm at the heart rate and rhythm, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to listen for murmurs now with the bell of my stethoscope. So I'm gonna do the same thing again at the aortic area, at the right sternal border, second intercostal space, Pulmonic, left sternal border, second intercostal space. Herbs point, left sternal border, third intercostal space. Tricuspid, left sternal border at the fourth intercostal space. And the mitral valve area would be the midclavicular line on the left fifth intercostal space. Okay, so now you need to report your findings. So when I did my pulses, there were two plus regular and smooth. Um, noted and um, my heart assessment is S1, S2, no abnormal, no abnormal uh, beats or extra beats, extra notes, no clicks, no gallops were noted. So no, no murmurs, no clicks, no extra sounds were noted. At this time, you're going to then do an apical pulse. So make sure you turn your diaphragm back on and you're going to count here 
at the mitral area, at the apex of the heart, and you're going to count for a full minute for the apical pulse. So that concludes the cardiac exam along with vascular exam. And then you would need to do your four Ps to exit the room.